Good evening, everybody. It's good to see you tonight. Uh, this is my third try, third take at this, so hopefully this one will work. Uh, thank you for those of you who have been uh, participating and a part of services. I appreciate that, and I'm glad you're able to do that. Uh, I also want to uh, thank you uh, for um, making sure that uh, you're communicating things with us, and it helps uh, us to do some things. Uh, I do apologize for any glitches and things that happen within the system. We're, we're working out the best we can. Um, I'm going to be talking to an NALC kind of techie guru guy from uh, Iowa who I know this week to see what can be done. The, the greater challenges is that uh, my computer will record live, uh, but uh, YouTube, but I can't record on it. <clears throat> my phone I can record like I'm doing right now, but I can't go live until I have a thousand subscribers on my YouTube channel. Um, so you can make a really big push and get me a thousand subscribers. Ooh, I could be famous. Probably not. Um, but but in the whole here, we're going to try to do some other things. We're going to try to add Facebook Live this Wednesday and this weekend. So we would be putting it out in both formats. <clears throat> if you're struggling to get onto YouTube and things, <clears throat> if you get onto the YouTube page and you find my page, just, again, you type U space, tube space, Matt space, Bon Fleth. You need to know how to spell my name. Uh, people have said there's no problem finding it if they do that. Um, when you get there... There is a place on that page that can tell you to subscribe. I'm pretty sure if you subscribe to that, you will get notifications when I go live and when it's coming live. So if you know that I am going, that you're subscribed, if you know I'm going to be going live, well, then that will show up and you'll get a notification to go there. Otherwise, you might get a notice afterwards that I was live. But the best thing to do is subscribe. Um, I also just want to encourage you and, and let you know, I, I know that... I've heard it. I haven't heard it directly myself, but I've heard that the, the president, I believe, has extended this time uh, to the end of April um, of uh, the more stay in place kind of things. Uh, brothers and sisters, I just want to remind you that, that the truth is that this could be a lot longer than that. And it's, it's worth it for the, us to do that if it's what it takes to help uh, minimize the loss of life and to help health care be able to help people through this uh, difficult, difficult time. But it creates problems for stressors. It creates all kinds of other issues. Uh, the world is being changed around us. We don't, we don't even have a clue yet how the world is being changed around us with losses of jobs and with um, changing of way jobs will work and how computers will be a part of that and all these things. And all these, all these other parts will be uh, seen as, the, as we get through to the end of this process. Um, the truth is, the truth is, there's lots of speculations on everybody's parts. Uh, I don't think anybody has an answer, um, and, and we gotta try to sort through that. Um, so, faithfulness is a key. You know, I know that my hands are uh, my hands are so dry um, from washing and from sanitizing, and I was thinking about our souls. Uh, you know, today with the dry bones uh, conversation. And that uh, the fact that as my hands get drier, they, they look even older. And as my hands get drier, they become more painful and cracked. And, and there's all these things that happen to us <clears throat> as we go through these, these kind of times. And sometimes dry can be the, the way we feel. Um, that's what Jesus is offering us. He's, he, he's offering us something that most people have gibbled at, but they haven't actually gone and dug in and and dealt with and, and learned what it really means that he is uh, the water of life and he's a stream of life. Um, how, to, how to engage with him and how to work with him and how to walk with him in a different way. I think of the, the, the lady, again, at the, the well, the Samaritan lady at the well, when she uh, is asked by Jesus to give him a, a drink of water and, and that response of hers, you know, uh, sir, this, this well is pretty doggone deep and you don't got a bucket. And so Jesus' response is, oh, honey, if you only knew, if you only knew who you were talking to, I don't need a bucket. I am the source of water, real water. Because with me, you won't thirst again. With me, you won't, you won't have that same problem. But that means we have to do some, some growing and some digging and some learning and some working. And uh, it's been encouraging. I was talking to one of our, our youth today and... Uh, Kind of on one hand, it's, it's an offhanded statement. If the other way, it's, it's a pretty deep statement. Well, I got nothing else to do, so I decided to read my Bible. Um, got to do something, I guess. But in conversation, as I kept going with them, they're 
talking about, you know, it's, it's really kind of neat. There's some cool stuff in here. And as they're starting to dig and ask questions, and of course I send them back to look some more, but it's just neat to listen to this person as they're reflecting and growing and, and without even knowing. And so I said, so what do you think God's doing for you here in the midst of all this? What do you think God's teaching? And he said, well, I'm not quite sure. But <clears throat> I know it's, it's something. I know it's got something to do with Maybe the way my life's been going, maybe how much I've been focusing on the wrong things, maybe um, needing to, to recenter myself in a very different way. And I thought that was pretty profound for a younger person of our congregation. Um, the fact is all of us, everybody in the congregation has got issues as far as having been way too much, doing too much, really not focusing and being faithful together. And that's really the challenge. Uh, we were asking the question all year and still are with the board, what does it mean to be the church? What does it mean to grow to be that? And it's a very different vision than I think what we've made it. It's not a pit stop. It's not a. It's not just a refueling station. Uh, it's about coming and being full because we are a body that is, again, going back to the dry bones, a group that has been breathed into by God and stand up as, a, as an army, a powerful army an army that stands and supports each other, an army that stands together, an army that stands and faces the world. And I think then about the uh, early disciples and some things I was reading about as I did the baptism class last year. And the um, the comment in, the, in that uh, book that we were working with with baptism class, that, you know, in the early church, people would be eating meals together every every week and they would have their meat service and they would have what was called a love feast, which was like a communion feast. And one week there might be one of your body is now missing because they've been taken by the Romans or they've been killed by the Romans. And every day it would be different. The numbers would change. People would come. People would be lost. People would give in. Um, and yet faithfulness, faithfulness, gathering together, Paul reminds us, don't, don't get out of the habit of gathering together as some have. Strengthen one another, bear one another, be with each other. You see, all these things are things that haven't been happening in the church for some time. We kind of got the idea that somehow we could do it by ourselves, that we could be uh, an army of one, we could be, be a, uh, independent and go do our own thing. And now we sit here when we need Christ most, and we don't know where to look for him or how to look for him. And that's sad. That's sad. It's hard to hard to look at that for people. And as I was looking at my one devotion, it, you know, it was talking about the fact that, that God is infinite. And because God is infinite, it reminds us that we're not. Uh, we're reminded every day, especially again right now, we're reminded every day how how limited we are, how in, in unable uh, to control our circumstances we truly are. Uh, we, we do not have the control we want to continue to believe that we've had but what happens is that in the middle of this is that God's infinity also brings us a comfort and a confidence that fills our fear-filled hearts. It's a comfort and a confidence that comes to a person who's a control freak. And it's a word of God's presence again that says, you are not God. I am. You are not enough to handle the challenges of life. I am. You are not infinite. You are finite. But God's word then to us is, I am infinite. My greatness is unsearchable from the, the book of Psalms. Only I am enough, God basically says. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, Paul reminds us, my grace is sufficient for you. And my grace is made perfect in weakness. You know, when we understand that and we struggle with that and we wrestle with that in the midst of these days, my hope is that what we begin to learn is that God really truly is the source of all life, the water from which we all need to drink, the food which will never allow us to be hungry again, the, the way that will direct our lives differently than how the world is acting around us and in the midst of struggles control us differently through the gifts of the fruits of the spirit love joy peace patience kindness goodness gentleness faithfulness and self-control to walk through this together to support one another 
to bear one another's burdens, to carry one another through like a three-legged race with 550 people in this congregation and then the whole community around us and the world tied together, working together, hopefully learning to step together instead of step, stepping to our own drum and our own way, realizing we have more than we need to share so that we can share with others and where we truly need help to ask without feeling that somehow that makes us less of a person. As this week comes to a close, the second week of this process that we've been in, the stay at home, I encourage you to again get out. Get out and take the Sunday drive. Teach a kid today what that is all about. Show them places you haven't seen. Just drive. Look at the world around you. Talk. Share. Thank you for all of those who have been sending me some uh, email information and some pictures about what you've been doing and how you're doing. I'm keeping all those things. That I'm treasuring them because for me, uh, it is kind of lonely as a pastor. I don't know if you understand that, but most pastors are hurting right now because they can't get to their sheep. Uh, a true pastor cares deeply for their people, even when the people don't think that, understand that, or even work to, to be a part of it. But the pastors do. And again, I've grown to love you all, and I continue to seek to do that. I just pray that you will continue to grow in faith and love with Jesus Christ, and that together we can get ourselves through this as best we can. I look forward to talking to you tomorrow. I uh, continue to ask for your prayers for the congregation, for each other, the conversations, the calls, the letters, the visits, even the small deliveries of something that just says, hey, we remember you're there. And the grace to accept the things that come because people care and they want you to know how loved you are together. So have a good night. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen.